Hello, welcome. Now today, I've invited along professional triathlete and friend of the show, Sam Pichter. Hello. And we're going to be asking the question, are elastic laces actually bad for our running? Now for years now, triathletes have been making use of this, a very cheap and simple piece of equipment to speed us up on race day. Yes, elastic laces are in many ways a triathlete's best friend. An easy way to speed us up in transition, you simply remove your old laces from your trainers, thread these in, fasten them at the top and voila, you're good to go. Pound for pound, they're probably the cheapest way of knocking off time on race day. Yeah, that's right. Now we know that these can save us time on race day, but I know plenty of triathletes out there that use them all year round, both for racing and for training. Mm, and I've definitely been guilty of this in the past, Mark. I think I've not been bothered to take them out of my race shoes. And so next time I've gone to race, they've still been there. And it meant I've done 10Ks, half marathons in them. But really, Mark, what is so wrong with that? They're convenient, they're easy to use. We quite happily race in them. So why not train in them also? It's not okay. I can see you don't approve, so why don't we go for a run and take a closer look at this. Okay, so we've been running for 30 minutes now and I, during that time I've spent close attention to how my foot feels running in these laces. Now, it does, they do hold my foot pretty well. Um, but I do notice that it does expand and contract slightly on impact and during extension in the toe off phase. Yeah, and that's probably the main difference really. Now, specifically with real laces or traditional laces like I'm using, they're designed to securely hold your foot so it's limiting and reducing the amount of that forward, backward movement, the up and down movement, and even side to side movement. Whereas elastic laces are primarily designed to allow you to get your foot easily and quickly into your shoe. Yes, yeah, so elastic laces are stretchy enough so you can get your foot in very easily, but they're tight enough so that your shoe will not fall off when you're trying to run. And generally speaking, that is absolutely fine for races, particularly short distance races, where every second counts. That's true. For a 10K, I might do six to 7,000 steps. For a half marathon, 15,000 steps. But training day in, day out, well, I guess that's hundreds of thousands of steps. And that sounds like quite a lot. Yeah, and it can really start to add up. And I guess this is where the issues may start to arise because as we've alluded to already with elastic laces, they stretch. So your feet can start to move around within the shoe. But with traditional laces, provided you're wearing a well-fitted shoe, you shouldn't get quite as accessible as much movement of your foot in the shoe. And it should support the way in which you run. See, with traditional laces, they can be tightened effectively. So it holds your foot securely across the top. They don't stretch, they don't contract, they just hold your foot nicely in place. Yeah, whereas elastic laces can allow too much movement, which over time during the contact phase and the toe off phase can put your foot under a lot of stress. Well, to elaborate on this, when we run, we've got muscles, ligaments, tendons, joints, all within our foot that are required to activate, work together to stabilize our foot. But with elastic laces, with that increased movement of our foot within the shoe, we have increased instability. And that means that those muscles, ligaments, tendons, and joints have to work even harder to control our foot and maintain the function of it. I see, and this can cause an issue because by constantly stressing these structures in the same way, it causes niggles, overuse, and even full-on running injuries. In fact, by running so many more miles in these laces, it can lead to any movement in the foot will just lead to rubbing or irritation and blistering, which any runner knows is just not good news. Yeah, and the fact of the matter is, it literally takes a few minutes to swap the laces out on those shoes and you could potentially prevent yourself from getting, well, a rather annoying and avoidable injury. And I've definitely been guilty in the past of doing this. Um, in fact, I've over tightened these laces before to try and stop my foot from moving inside the shoe. But what this has done is it's caused inflammation on the top part of my foot, which has then just been very frustrating when you're trying to train regularly and race.
Now in the past, with traditional laces, and you're welcome to try this elastic laces as well, I've actually used a special lacing pattern where I'd loop back round on the top two eyelets, and that would just help to hold my foot more securely in the shoe, stop that up-down movement and any heel slippage. You're welcome to try that with elastic laces as well. It may work may not, not too sure, but welcome to give it a go. Now, this whole subject does kind of remind me a bit of the whole barefoot running debate in which barefoot fans out there would tell you that actually running barefoot does work the foot harder, but it helps to strengthen it and improve the function of the foot when you're running. And you might be able to say the same for elastic laces as well. Obviously with barefoot running, you increase your margin training barefoot gradually. You'd want to do the same with elastic laces as well. My only bit of advice here, just from personal experience having run in elastic laces a lot, is that you do feel a slight loss of efficiency in the elastic laces. It's really hard to explain or to prove, but it's definitely there. But obviously any loss is outweighed on race day, or particularly in short distance triathlons with those super speedy transitions. Excellent. And I think that is some excellent food for thought. What I've come to realise is that elastic laces are of course great for race day, but perhaps best avoided for everyday training. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's not like we see ultra marathon runners using elastic laces. So for all those training miles, I think it's best to stick to those traditional laces. At least that's what I'd advise. On that note, race you home, Sam. Yeah. Oi, Mark, wait. Cheers for that run, Sam. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Now, I hope you found that useful. Yeah, and if you do have any more questions on elastic laces or laces in general, actually, just drop them in the comments section below and we'll do our best to get back to you. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If so, give it a thumbs up, give it a like, and don't forget to give GTN a follow on our social media channels and subscribe to us on YouTube.